Well, hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now us baby boomers have been leading the way for decades in almost every yardstick you want to look at. And we are once again on top of another benchmark, one not to be um, terribly proud of. Now, hold on to your seats. Maybe to no one's surprise, baby boomers are leading the divorce rates for Americans 50 plus population, while divorce is becoming less common for younger adults. So-called gray divorce is on the rise. All this from the findings of the Pew Research Center. It was published uh, last March, a year ago. Since the 1990s, Pew's reports divorce has roughly doubled, hitting 109%. So if anyone out there is contemplating divorce or into it right now, today's guest might help you with the financial side, uh, among other things anyway. Sally Boyle is a certified financial planner and even wrote a book about it. It's called Deconstructing Divorce, Taking the Mystery Out of Divorce and Its Impact on Your Family, Finances, and Future. Now, we're going to talk with Sally in just a minute. Now, before that, I just want to give a plug for our website, bloomerboomer.com, where it updates with new material, news, ideas, and great discounts on products and services, and it's all free to subscribe. Now, there is also our YouTube channel to subscribe, our lively Facebook page, uh, live events around the country, and a lot of other really cool things. So check us out if you haven't done so already. Now, we'll be right back with Sally right after this. Our guest is Sally Boyle, a certified financial planner and author of Deconstructing Divorce. Sally, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, um, I got to ask you, how did you get into this game now, specializing divorce? Uh, was it a business decision or did you have some passionate interest in the topic? Um, unfortunately, uh, my introduction to divorce was my personal divorce um, and it was um, difficult and uh, long. And um, as I was doing my regular work, which is financial planning work for uh, clients, more and more people were coming to me after their settlements and their divorces. And I recognized that a lot of them were making the exact same mistakes I made um, in uh, my settlement, in my divorce process. And it was basically due to a lack of awareness. So um, I made the decision to write the book um, because I thought if there was a one-stop shopping place where people could go um, to familiarize themselves with divorce and its process, maybe they would make fewer mistakes. Well, that just sounds like your, your idea and purpose was good. Now, I, I went through your book and, and you talked about, uh, as you said, you talked about your own personal experience with divorce. Now, it doesn't sound like it was a nice divorce. At least it was unusual, wasn't it? Tell us about it. I think uh, it will surprise some people. Yeah, no, it was very acrimonious. And I mean, we um, settled our divorce and, and signed our agreement. Um, but um, when my um, now former spouse became involved with um, his second wife, um, it sort of uh, started to fall apart at the implementation stage, the implementation of our uh, financial agreements as well as our custodial agreements. and. Uh, we ended up um, in a situation where I had uh, to ask for a restraining order and um, it put us into a very litigious situation for another two and a half years um, and it really set us up to have a very acrimonious relationship going forward. So uh, if there was any way I could encourage or help people to avoid that sort of situation, uh, that's really the intention of both my uh, divorce practice as well as my book. Yeah, well, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, learn something more from that uh, as we talk more. But before we get into your expertise now, you know, watching the aftermath of so many divorces and the pain of it, uh, you must arrive at some personal revelation about the, that ancient tradition of marriage that's become so broken and mangled up. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think it does all come down to communication. And um, I mean, just like in our divorce processes, what I see is communication breaks down um, in uh, people's circumstances. And I think that's true in our marriages. I mean, I think some marriages were maybe never meant to be. I think a lot of us might sit back and reflect on the fact that um, I really never probably really wanted to marry this person in the first place. But assuming that that's not the case, I really think our communication systems break down and 
that's literally um, most of the problem throughout a divorce too, especially if you have two attorneys um, doing the communicating for you. Um, maintaining that communication um, system or process or the ability to communicate in an effective way, I think is, is um, both the problem and the solution. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm uh, a big advocate of good communicating and uh, sometimes easier said than done, but uh, I think you hear that more and more, that communication is a key. You know, there were a couple of interesting uh, uh, findings from that uh, Pew Research study about about gray divorce. Is it more likely among people who have been married? It, it is more likely that they they come to conclude who've been married multiple times and people who haven't been married very long. Now, uh, I think you can draw some conclusions about those findings. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's what you see in your practice or if you, or if you have a chance to discern that or not. I, I do. Mo most of my practice, though, uh, deals with first divorces. Um, and typically, they were long-term marriages, long-term being defined as 10 years or longer. Um, I have very little interaction, frankly, with second and third divorces, which are probably even shorter in duration. So. Uh, most people who seek me out have um, been married for a long period of time, um, have accumulated assets together, and have children. Yeah, so um, so in your practice, it would seem that, uh, you know, the biggest issue is dividing up financial assets and, and planning for retirement, or is, uh, I'm sure there's more to it, but those seem like they'd be awfully important. They, they are awfully important. <clears throat> With the um, gray divorce in particular, this is a divorce of a long-term marriage that <clears throat> people have been together for an extended period of time. And all of a sudden they have to make a decision that how are they going to divide their assets and then will they have enough um, to retire on. And yeah, it, yeah. One of the critical things that a, a certified divorce financial analyst can do is not just help you build your financial affidavit, which of course you can do yourselves, but actually give you some insight as to how to view what you have and maybe the most effective way to divide it between the two of you looking forward. In other words, how can we divide this in such a way that it will somewhat minimize the impact on our ability? Which there's no question a late divorce is highly impactful there um, and quite often in a negative way. Yeah, that's true. And uh, the primary breadwinner uh, or the secondary uh, uh, part of that uh, career oriented uh, uh, side, if there are two sides of it, uh, they have to uh, be looking out for their own good in terms of uh, retirement that might have come from a pension or 401k, that type of thing. So that's probably pretty critical. It, it really is. And, and interestingly enough, so many of the baby boomers um, some one of the spouses usually was the woman probably took some time away from her career um did contribute to that retirement pot and yet has their own needs and um the person who was the primary breadwinner reluctantly has to let go of some of their retirement assets in order to help compensate that um, person who maybe stepped back and it's not that they didn't work, they just worked at taking care of the family. And, um, but in our society, there's not a financial reward for that, certainly not from a retirement perspective. And that's why dividing those assets are um, really, really important that it be done carefully um, so that um, some thought has been given to how can we maximize these resources that we're now dividing in half to take care of us for the rest of our lives. It's a critical and difficult question. So what uh, are the circumstances that someone would seek your help? Are you uh, the person who was handling the uh, finances for a family or they say, oh, we're getting divorced and some attorney refers you? How does all that work? Um, it both ways. You know, I have um, people who come to me because they're considering divorce. I've, you know, developed a reputation for being one who can give guidance. Um, so they may, I might be their first stop. They may be couples who feel that they can handle the conversation um, together uh, and would like to understand the rules around financial impact before they go see an attorney. 
so that they can go into the attorneys informed. Um, but attorneys quite often send uh, clients, mediators send their clients to me to help build the financial affidavit because I don't just build it, but I give people some insight as to how to view their, um, their investments, their retirement assets, their financial assets um, from different perspectives. In other words, retirement assets are very different from hard assets like a home. So how, how do we look at them? And I think then they go back to the mediator or to the attorney with some insights, which makes their job a little bit easier when it comes to the conversation around how do we divide this. Okay, so this is kind of an inside baseball question, I guess, but um, how do you get compensated? Normally uh, in your field, uh, you know, there's a percentage or however, or a fee based. Um, are, do you charge by the hour? How does that work? I, I do charge by the hour. Um, if I'm on a team with um, attorneys um, in a collaborative process, generally uh, that uh, my fee is folded into um, the overall retainer, but um, most frequently I'm working with clients on an hourly basis. So you really have some something of a unique field. Is this uh, pretty prevalent or are you one of the few practitioners? I think there's um, quite a few CDFAs across the country. Um, I think it comes down to your region. I live in New Hampshire. New Hampshire's uh, rural state. Um, it may not be quite as well accepted here as it is in other states um, where uh, CDFAs are more prevalent. Uh, you know, I, I think about even Massachusetts close by, but Texas, California, Florida. So um, we're not well known um, and depending upon where we are from, we may be less well known and in New Hampshire we're kind of quiet. There's only um, probably two in my immediate region. Gotcha. Well, listen, Sally, as we wind down here, um, other than your book, and uh, we'll get a picture of that up there uh, so people can see it, uh, other than getting that, and uh, someone might uh, be watching this, uh, what kind of takeaway uh, might be something that would be uh, worth keeping in mind? You know, I really feel information is the most important people can arm themselves with. When I got divorced, as an example, I thought the first stop I should make uh, was at an attorney's office because, of course, going to court and litigation was the only option I was aware of. That's not the case. Um, you can go to court, and that's the worst direction, but you can work with attorneys who collaborate together. You have mediators who are available to you, so understand your options. Um, and inform yourself with those options because you may make a better decision about which one is best for you. My mantra is to hire the attorney last um, because if you know what sort of process you want, you'll know which attorney you would like to interview because they all have their own biases. But also to understand the process um, so that you know where you are at any point in time in that process and really become familiar with your finances, not just what they are today, but what they're going to look like after your settlement and enter into an, a, a settlement with that in mind. Good. Well, uh, Sally, uh, you uh, provide a great service and uh, a lot of people will need it. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, uh, I hope you liked the show. I'd like you to visit bloomerboomer.com where it updates with new material and ideas and news and some great discounts on products and services. And it's all free to subscribe. There's also uh, our YouTube uh, channel to subscribe, live, a lively Facebook page. Uh, you can follow live events around the country and a lot of other really cool features. So check us out if you haven't done so already. Until next time, so long.